Won't somebody please think of the children? This is something that has often been parodied when our children are under attack. And right now, they are more under attack than ever. We are seeing literally our schools, the cartoons, so many things in our society today are trying to indoctrinate our children. And it is up to us to do something about it. There's some crazy things that have been going on over the past week. It all seems like it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. I will be getting into that and more on The William Hall Show. All right, welcome back to the show. So let's go ahead and jump right into things here. So first of all, we have a teacher that is in Virginia and they are now being put on leave because they were basically going against the transgender policy that the school was trying to implement. My name is Tanner Cross and I'm speaking out of love for those who suffer with gender dysphoria. 60 Minutes this past Sunday interviewed over 30 young people who transition but they felt led astray because lack of pushback or how easy it was to make physical changes to their bodies in just three months. They are now detransitioning. It's not my intention to hurt anyone, but there are certain truths that we must face when ready. We condemn school policies like 8040 and 8035 because it will damage children, defile, defile the holy image of God. I love all of my students, but I will never lie to them regardless of the consequences. I'm a teacher, but I serve God first, and I will not affirm that a biological boy can be a girl and vice versa, because it's against my religion, it's lying to a child, it's abuse to a child, and it's sinning against our God. So for those that are wondering here, the policy that he's actually talking about is this policy at the school that is policy 8040, or 8040. And basically what it says is that it's it's on this, this is the Ludon County, by the way. This is the, the woke kind of area, district or whatever. They've been in the news pretty much every other week about something that they're doing with the schools, trying to add some new progressive policy into place. But this is the actual thing that it says here in this in this policy. It says, the staff shall allow gender expansive or transgender students to use their chosen name and gender pronouns that reflect their gender identity without any substantiating evidence, regardless of the name and gender recorded in the student's permanent educational record. So in other words, what it's this is this affirming kind of behavior that I've talked about before, where it doesn't matter what they do, just go ahead and go along with it, okay? Because that is the policy. And it's telling the teachers, it's telling everyone else at the school, all of the students as well, by the way, that you must adhere to this. You must play this game with this student. Play this false reality. Pretend to be in their world. Accept what it is that they say. Because apparently students know better than anyone else. So the thing I love that he said here is the line where he says, I'm a teacher, but I serve God first. And I will not affirm that a biological boy can be a girl and vice versa because it's against my religion. This is so true and it's so integral to what we do as, as either Christians or what have you that we understand that there is an absolute truth in this world and going against that is not something that we can just play along with. It's not something that we can just ignore and just say, oh, well, that's just what this crazy person in government says, or that's what some other city's doing. It's going to come home to a school near you. It's going to creep in somewhere. It always will, because that's what happens when you let this stuff keep festering and festering and festering. It eventually bo boils over and it becomes and just gets out of control. And then there's almost nothing you can do about it at that point. But the thing is, is that, so many people are oblivious to what's actually going on with these issues. They are very important because it's involving children. It's involving what children are learning in schools, what they do every day. It's in front of them. They are aware of it. A lot of them are battling it, dealing with this. Somebody has to step up to actually say something about it. And the thing is, is that all you have to do for a second is just imagine that you have a daughter and that they're in a changing room, changing with some other transgender girl that's really a boy. If you're okay with that, okay, go along with it, sure. That's, if that's your warped reality of thinking that's, that, that's okay, then you go ahead and you do that. But the reality is I think the vast majority of Americans, regardless of what political party, party affiliation you have, are saying this is way too far. This is ridiculous. We're not going to play these games. 
Believe it or not, there's even a lot of gay and lesbian couples that have children or whatever, adopted or otherwise, and they're saying, you know what, no, our kids aren't going to do this, because even they're not that progressive and that far left with these policies. So it's good to see that people are doing this, because uh, once again, if you're a part of the system and you're just kind of going along with this and you're claiming to be a Christian, you might as well be complicit in it because you're adhering to that policy that I will tell a lie willingly because I'm here to appease what the these students want. I'm no longer going to actually be a teacher. It doesn't mean you need to be preaching the Bible on the PE field or something like that. I mean, this, this guy's one of the physical education teachers, I think. But still, the point is that if you're going along with it, if you're literally going to just tell them a lie straight to their face, you're complicit in that lie. And this guy's saying, you know what, enough of that. I'm not standing up for it. As I mentioned, the school puts them on leave because of this. Now, it's, it's still a suspension without pay, but still, they, they said in a statement, well, it has nothing to really do with this. We know what it was. It, of course, had to do with this. It was everything to do with this. But we need more teachers standing up and calling it as it is. I believe there was a story from about maybe a year or two, actually probably about two years ago. And it was of this guy, This uh, I think it was the same thing. He was a, a PE teacher. And there was a student that was in there that was a, I believe it was a trans boy. So a girl, a biological girl that transitioned, whatever they want to call it, into a, into a boy, wanted to be treated and named and, and behaving like a boy. So they said, okay, well, to do that, she's going to be using the boy's bathroom now. She's going to be in, able to go in the boy's locker. And the PE coach or the coach or whoever it was was like, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm not an all good conscience going to be in his, in the same locker room as a young girl that's not my own daughter or, or something like that. He's like, I'm not going to sit here and watch this girl change. It's still a girl. And you know what? And you know what the school did when that, when he actually made that statement? They fired him for it. Gone. Because he said, I refuse to basically watch a biological girl change in a locker room. That's where things are going. People need to be aware of what's happening, and you need to be thinking about the children here. That's the important factor in all of this. Blue's Clues ran this segment based off of a pride parade, because obviously it's Pride Month, so everybody has to be about Pride Month. Not just adults, but even young children that don't know anything about this. Check this out. Hey, Blue, look at all these families. Hi, families. It's time for a pride parade. Families marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. This family has two mommies. They love each other so proudly. And they all go marching in the big parade. Families marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. Family has two daddies, they love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big parade. Come on, friends! Families marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. These papas are non binary, they love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big parade. Families marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. Trans members of this family all love each other so proudly and they all go marching in the big parade. Come join the fun! Families marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. People choose their family. They love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big parade. Families marching six by six, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching six by six, hurrah, hurrah. Ace, by and Pan, grown-ups, you see, can love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big parade. Oh yeah! Families marching seven by seven, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching seven by seven, hurrah, hurrah. All families are made differently. They love each other so proudly and they all go marching in the big parade. Families marching eight by eight, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching eight by eight, hurrah, hurrah. This house is a family of kings and queens. They love 
love each other so proudly and they all go marching in the big parade let's celebrate families marching nine by nine hurrah hurrah families marching nine by nine hurrah hurrah allies to the queer community can love their queer friends so proudly and they all go marching in the big parade families marching ten by ten hurrah hurrah families marching ten by ten hurrah hurrah love is love is love you see and everyone should love proudly and we'll all go marching in the big parade <laughs> wow thanks blue so i believe the actual full video keeps going and keeps going but the point here is Notice what they're saying here. Notice what they're doing. I, I think a lot of this is see the thing is with the with the people that are on the left and the people that are d doing these things for the children is that they know exactly what they're doing. They know that parents are going to be in the room. They know that parents are going to probably see this for the vast majority of people and not approve of this. So what they try to do is they try to make everything very very subtle. If you notice in the background, there's all these colors and it's very bright and vibrant, something that kids are going to see and just immediately kind of be enticed into. What is all of these? What is all? Why are these colors there? Why is everything so bright and vibrant looking? It's almost like it's just a trick of the eye. But notice all the gay pride flags in the background, the trans flags in the background, as if the kids are going to know anything about that. It's this subliminal messaging in a way where they're just kind of sticking it little elements and hints of it in the background, but not telling you exactly what it is. So when they grow up, they recognize what it is later once they can attribute a name to it. One of the families featured in there actually showed children or transgender children or whatever that have undergone sex reassignment surgery or in other words, genital mutilation. That's basically what that is. And they're just making it seem like it's perfectly normal. I don't know if you also picked up on this too, where it says that some people choose their family. Now, if you think about that, I think what a lot of normal parents will probably think is, well, yeah, you know, you know, sometimes you can, I guess, kind of choose some family, right? I, I guess if you know you take somebody in, that's not what they're talking about. What they're actually referring to is a disowning of your own family if they're not approving of your new identity. Okay, I've been reading through this uh, book. Uh, that is uh, basically called Irreversible Damage. And it talks about families and mothers and daughters and them going through these different stories, uh, these tragic stories about how daughters have gone through this transition process and have literally just disowned their family because they view the LBGT community as their new family. That's their new home. And therefore, why did they leave their original family? It's because they didn't believe in everything they thought that they should be. In other words, we're not talking about the fact that the family was disowning them, that their own family decided to not support them. Most of the time, their family was being extremely supportive of them. But they said, hey, maybe you should just slow down and think about things a little bit. Well, all of a sudden, that was enough for them to say, well, I don't feel safe around you anymore, so I'm going to leave you, cut off all communication, and go move in with my new family of LGBT people. That's essentially what you're seeing them talking about here. They're saying that you can disown your family. Your family is whoever you choose to make it out to be. And I'm sure you've heard the statement before where people say you, you can't choose. You don't choose family, right? In the sense that sometimes you just have idiots in your family, right? That you, and you just kind of have to deal with them because family's family. You don't get to choose who they are. They're defying that. They're changing everything about that and saying, you know what? You get to pick whoever you want. You can disown and, and, and get rid of other family members and at the same time, in the same breath, you can pick up new family members to be with, and it doesn't matter. It's all about who you choose to be family with, and that's all that matters. But that's a lie, and it's not the real world. And they're selling this to children. Once again, it's subtle, but that's exactly what they're talking about here. Also, in case you're listening to audio as well, or if you're even watching a video and didn't notice it, there's a communist fist right there on the microphone. The microphone basically is the communist fist. In case you didn't realize that. It's almost like they're trying to pull some, once again, some type of subliminal messaging. Why is that there? I mean, what could the animator possibly have been thinking about doing by making the micro or the microphone a, a communist fist? I mean, it's like they're purposefully trying to hide and add little things in there that to the naked eye you may not see, but that slowly creeps into these children's brains, causing them to recognize what it is and be in support of it later. As I mentioned, the rainbow flags, the trans flags, all the bright colors, everything else in the background, all these different animals, 
all meant to trick you into believing something that's simply not true. This stuff has no place in children's cartoons. It's not teaching them anything that's going to make them a smarter person whatsoever. It's just indoctrination. That's all it is. Don't let them tell you anything other than that. This is nothing but indoctrination. And the reason why it's indoctrination is because, think about it for a second here. They want to pretend like they're all so inclusive, right? That's what you hear all the time. Oh, we're so inclusive about all this stuff, guys. We're, we're doing this because so kids can grow up to be so accepting and not terrible people as that mother was talking about her child that I was talking about on a show a couple of shows ago. That's what they try to pull this as, is that we're just trying to be so inclusive of everybody and we want kids to grow up to be super tolerant. Except when it has to deal with Christianity, right? I mean, kids get bullied for many things, not just maybe being gay or trans or this or that, but sometimes it could be religious, sometimes it could be the fact that they just don't look a certain way, or maybe they're too short, maybe they're too tall, but the thing is, or maybe they have a weird religion, maybe they're one of these uh, Muslim religions where they have to wear the whole headdress or the hijab or whatever, they don't teach an entire group of kids all of this stuff, They don't. you don't see them stuffing that stuff into these cartoons, talking about Christianity and, and the different religions and how they all these Christian or, or these different religions can kind of be around you and you need to be aware of all of them and what it looks like. They don't teach you any of that. They're only doing it for this. That's why it's indoctrination. They're not trying to make this an equal kind of representation situation. They're only focused on one thing and one thing alone, and that is sexualizing these children too young. Which brings me to kind of the crux of all of this. The kind of the biggest story that I have found on this issue. Parents are now outraged at this New York school, this private school, by the way, this private liberal school where they're paying good money by the way, to the, to the school to basically get their kids indoctrinated. So this is a video that is being shown to first graders. I'll repeat that again. This video is being shown to first graders about masturbation. Pass it, Squeaks. Whoa, watch it. You almost hit me in the pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny, you two? He said pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> Do you notice that when you say pee pee, you giggle, but when you say penis, you say it in a serious voice? I never noticed that before. Some children and adults feel uncomfortable when they talk about their private parts, so they make up cute or funny names for them. What's one for a girl's private parts? Vajayjay! <laughs> <laughs> but what does Scoops mean when he says vajayjay? He means vulva. That's right, Kayla. It's important to use the proper words for our private parts. Why? Because our private parts are just as amazing as our hearts, lungs, brains, or any other of our amazing body parts. But our hearts pump blood, our lungs breathe, and our brains think. All our private parts do is pee! That's not entirely true, Scoops. It is true that a person pees or urinates through a hole called the urethra in the penis. Does everyone have a urethra? They do. It can be harder to see, but girls have a tiny hole in the front of the vulva where urine comes out from their urethra. Urination is actually very important. It helps us get rid of waste, stuff our body doesn't need. Hey, how come my penis gets big sometimes and points up in the air? That's called an erection. Sometimes I touch my penis because it feels good. Sometimes when I'm in my bath or when mom puts me to bed, I like to touch my vulva too. You have a clitoris there, Kayla, that probably feels good to touch the same way Keith's penis feels good when he touches it. But have you ever noticed that older kids and grown-ups don't touch their private parts in public? Hmm, they don't? That's right, Keith. It's okay to touch yourself and see how different body parts feel, but it's best to only do it in private. Well, if private parts are so special, why do you cover them up? Because they are private, silly. That's right, Kayla. Because they are private. Hey, Squeaks, pass it. Wait. Okay, I'm ready. I'm going to level with you on this one. I don't see how you can watch this or listen to this without being sick to your stomach. Because th remember, this is going to six year olds, seven years old max. That is disgusting behavior and, and the disgusting video to be showing to kids at that age. 
That to me just makes me sick to my stomach just hearing that. It's terrible. It's so evil to do that to students like this and to kids like that. The thing is that the video and the curriculum is also teaching children that family members, including parents, grandparents, should not be able to hug or touch them, even innocently, without the children's consent. That's basically what uh, is, is another section of what they're trying to do here and, and push also in addition to these to these things. This is a part of a bigger video series as well about trying to basically make children I don't even know, more sexually aware, but why at that age? Why at that age are they trying to do that? The thing is that schools don't have the right to even show sexually explicit material to children without parental consent anyways. So it's extremely crazy that they're just adding this in there. Now, I'm making that statement, and I'm telling you that the schools don't have the ability to show sexually explicit material to students legally without the parents' consent. Here's the thing. They didn't have the parents' consent. And do you know how they got away with it? Pay attention, parents, because this is very, very, very important. They don't consider this education to be sexual explicit education, really. They don't. They have recategorized everything, especially when it comes down to LGBT stuff as well, by the way. Any of that stuff is not really considered as sex education to them. It's just kind of because they view it as being required. So oftentimes what schools have done in the past is that they will give parents an opt out form where they can opt their kids out of hearing the sex ed stuff and whatnot like that. So, you know, they'll, you know, most of the parents might say, okay, well, I'm going to out my kid out. I'd rather be the one to educate them rightfully so on these sensitive topics, right? Well, you know, when they do that, they will take their kid out of the normal kind of sex ed classes, but they'll leave them in unbeknownst to the parent, by the way. The LGBTQ stuff, the masturbation classes, things like that. They'll leave them in that because they view those as being integrally important. That's how they'll typically put it. And it's it's straight up lying to parents because they know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to trick parents into thinking that we're not teaching them about any of that stuff. Don't pay attention to that. When in reality, they actually are doing that. They really are. The thing is that when I was in school, I remember doing taking sex ed. I mean, I think I was in probably fifth grade. Fourth or fifth grade. I'm pretty sure it was fifth grade. But now you've seen them pushing it earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier up. Now, first grade? Really? First grade? I mean, does that seem just absolutely bonkers to anybody else that they should be learning about this kind of stuff at that age? I mean, they are a long way off from even hitting puberty. And for some reason, we're talking about this. The problem is that at that age, kids are extremely impressionable. Anybody that's been around a five, six-year-old, somewhere in that range, knows how impressionable they are with these types of things. And they're they're at that stage in life when if you don't say anything about something, oftentimes they just won't be aware of it, they're not going to deal with it, and things are fine. You're good to go. The problem is that at that age, too, is that when you tell them something in an effort to maybe just inform them, like, hey, just letting you know, five-year-old, don't go play over there by those vicious dogs well you're now informing them of something that they can't do which makes them want to do it this is exactly what this is doing it's kind of this education or they're being wrapped up as education when really it's just encouragement you're just letting them know setting them up ahead of time hey go ahead and masturbate go ahead right out of first grade as as fast as you can things that you weren't even concerned about at that age all of a sudden They're talking about it and putting it in the minds of these kids way, way too early. Especially when you haven't even told the parents about what's actually going on. It's a big left-wing rush to overly sexualize children. This isn't the first of it that has taken place. Because we're going to continue to see this happen. Because they're telling them already, well, you can choose to be different genders and uh, whatever you choose to be. You can change it halfway through your life. You can do it as early as you want. I mean, there's literally parents out there that I've heard that have been trying to transition their kids as early as three years old. It would blow your mind how these parents are doing this, how these schools are doing this. Be aware. The parents are in uproar in New York, but it's like, guys, you're paying money to a private school, by the way, for them to literally indoctrinate your children. You need to be aware of what they're teaching. Be aware of what's on that curriculum because you never know. There's schools out there, by the way, too, that are changing, allowing kids to basically transition to what the school sees, but not having to inform the parents. Very dangerous behavior because what they're doing now 
is that the teachers will call your daughter by a male name. They'll refer to her as a him. Every teacher will do it. They'll use it on, they'll allow them to write that way. They'll affirm it. They'll allow them to use the boy's bathroom. They'll do all of that stuff. But they won't tell you. Official documents that get sent home to you don't have the new name they're calling her at school. They have her actual name that you gave her. So this whole time, you had no idea. Because the school is complicit in the behavior. And that is scary stuff. It truly is. So just a quick reminder that I do have a Patreon page where you can donate directly to the show and help me out here through that. But also, please remember to subscribe to my channel on Rumble and also to the Telegram channel as well, where you can see up-to-date statuses and other postings like that. You can find that at Telegram or t.me slash William5849. Ron DeSantis signs a pro-girls sports bill, and this is kind of in line with something that we've been looking for to happen in other states as well. But as good as actually happening here in Florida. So this is about females competing in sports against biological males. That's effectively what's going on. It's this new left-wing push to put these transgender women, which are really just biologically men, into women's sports and then say they can compete at the same level, guys. There's no problem here. What's to look at? Well, the problem is that they've been dominating females in the stats, they've been breaking records, and they've also been hurting in an actual literal danger to a lot of women if there's any type of contact in the sport as well. It's really, really disingenuous, and it's not fair to biological women. The group that the left pretended for so long to really care about is now literally getting erased. So one of the things he was talking about here, uh, he said one side points to the unfair biological advantage people were born male have which in turn robs female students of scholarships and opportunities. Like I said, it's something we have to take into consideration because what they're doing is that if a woman is winning or breaking a record, then and a transgender man or a transgender woman steps in to try to overtake that and they take that record away. Well, what happened? Everything that that woman works for that biological woman worked for to achieve that goal has been stripped away. So the thing is that girls are going to play sport, girl sports and boys are going to play boy sports. We're going to make sure that that, that's a reality. The bill we're doing today will ensure fairness for women athletes for years to come in the state of Florida. It says that athletic teams or sports that are designed for females are open to females and we're going to go based off of biology. So that's the statement there from uh, Ron DeSantis on that situation. And he's absolutely correct. Biology is what's important. It's biology, by the way, is science. The thing that the left claims to be the party of, but only when it is convenient for them, as that man mentioned earlier, the teacher mentioned earlier in this uh, show. And we have to take that into consideration. It is incredibly important that we are understanding of what is actually happening in women's sports, protecting actual women to make sure that they are able to compete amongst each other and in their own class. And it's effectively cheating when you have a man try to transition over and basically compete against women in that same way. So, This bill, in case you didn't know, was actually signed literally the first day of Pride Month. Now, that was not an accident, obviously. I mean, he could have signed it at any day in May, but he chose the first day of Pride Month to make a statement. Ron DeSantis wanted to make a statement. He wants to make it news. And I love that he's doing that in that manner because it shows that he's not afraid to go out and say, you know what? Boom, we're doing this. This is the way things are going to be. It doesn't matter how you guys look at it. I'm putting my foot in the sand right now. This is where we draw the line. And and I'm glad to see that he's doing that because he's clearly he's ready for the fight that's going to inevitably come knocking. And so do we. We need to be ready for it as well because it's going to happen. At some point, we're going to have to stand up and have a draw a line in the sand and say, nope, this is where it stops. This is where it ends. We're, we're, We're protecting our actual women. And we're not letting the left change this into whatever it is that they want to change it into. So Joe Biden has been on a tear lately saying some of the stupidest statements I've heard so far. And now... He made another racist comment talking about black entrepreneurs being unable to find lawyers. The data shows young black entrepreneurs are just as capable of succeeding given the chance as white entrepreneurs are. But they don't have lawyers. They don't have they they, they don't have accountants, but they have great ideas. Does anyone doubt this whole nation be better off? from the investments those people make, and I promise you, that's why I set up the National Small Business Administration that's much broader, because they're going to get those loans. So first of all, black people aren't able to use the internet, apparently. And now, 
they can't find lawyers or accountants. Okay, Biden, sure, whatever you say, man. But the thing is here is that this guy has often made weird racist comments. Once again, just another situation where it's like, you know, I'm so woke that I have to believe that black people are incapable of doing certain things. It's it's something else to blame that they just can't get by to do and be as successful as white people, because that's apparently the way that all liberals basically think it is. And the thing is that it's crazy how how blatant he can be in this. And the media gives him a pass after pass after pass. If Trump said this, he I'm, I'm telling you right now, once again, another impeachment. It would have been very easy for them to do that. Now, of course, the liberals on Twitter are going to do everything in their power to cover for Biden, no matter what. They don't care what he says. It's going to be, it's their job to really interpret the words of what Biden's saying, because surely he didn't really mean that, right? I mean, I voted for the guy, right, guys? That's basically what they're saying. So let's look at this dumb tweet, number one, here from Twitter. Uh, in the response to that tweet from Biden or that video clip from Biden. And this guy says, he's not literally saying we don't have them. He's saying that historically we haven't had the same level of access. Hmm. Well, that's kind of funny because, you know, he actually literally did say that you just couldn't find them. I mean, come on. Like, what else is it going to take? I mean, the guy could come out right now and say, I hate all black people. And I'm telling you right now, you have dudes like this on Twitter saying, what he really meant was... Okay, no, you don't get to interpret and, and try to figure out the, the between the lines what he was saying. I'm going off of literally what he said, okay? And he literally said that black people are not able to find these lawyers. They don't have the lawyers. They don't have the accountants. That's what he's saying. And the problem is that people like this trying to cover for him, trying to pretend as if he really meant this, don't have any clue what's going on. They don't care what's coming out of his mouth at all. They're, they're part of the problem because they're just letting him get away with it, letting him get away with it, letting him get away with it. Meanwhile, if you guys that got the same things that Trump said, the whole uh, good people on both sides or anything like that, don't think he totally said that because they have no idea about what the facts of the actual quotes are from what he said. I mean, it couldn't be more plain as day in this situation. But once again, oh, it's, it's historically this and that and the other. What? How does history, how does even something from a year ago keep you from being able to find an accountant or a lawyer today? Oh, newsflash Biden, there's black lawyers and there's black accountants today. Who knew? I mean, that's how stupid it is. This low expectation, uh, can't do anything, can't get anywhere. And so us as Democrats have to help the black people out because they just are not capable of doing it without our help. That is the Democrat platform in a nutshell, and they're okay with it, and that's what it is. It doesn't get more obvious than that. So speaking of Biden, he also made this ridiculously absurd claim that white supremacy is a uh, bigger racism than ISIS or Al-Qaeda. We must not give hate a safe harbor. As I said in my address to the Joint Session of Congress, according to the intelligence community, terrorism from white supremacy is the most lethal threat to the homeland today, not ISIS, not Al Qaeda, white supremacists. That's not me. That's the intelligence. Just because he says something doesn't make it true. Okay. So if you're watching this on the video, I'm going to pop up a statistic kind of chart here of the interracial crime, uh, violent crime rates between 2012 and 2015. And what you're going to see here is, well, let's look at that. Let's look at that first column to the far left. You see black on white. Crime, okay, 540,000 or 540,873 of these violent crimes committed from black people towards white people. And then in the second column right there, only 92,706 crimes, violent crimes that were from white people to black people, okay? And if you go all the way to the far right, you'll see that there's actually a decent amount of even black on Hispanic crime. Actually, if you look at just the top things there, you're seeing that blacks are significantly more responsible for committing violent crimes towards white people, towards Hispanic people. There's a decent amount of Hispanic on white too. Very little white though. And keep in mind, guys, who's the majority in the country? <laughs> who's the vast majority? What's the percentage of actual black people in the United States right now? It's 13%. By the way, those stats aren't even, are even smaller than that really in the total population because I guarantee you all, if not most of these, are black men, which only make up six percent. So it it just goes to show just how ridiculous these numbers really are when you actually look at what they are. In other words, white supremacy is not the problem. 
This is not the problem. It never has been the problem. It's what they want you to think is the problem because that's the way the Democrats operate. The thing is that Biden has no proof to back up that claim. Just because he's saying it doesn't make it inherently true. But the thing is that realistically, we have to be looking at the BLM riots from last year. I mean, look at what took place. I mean, they destroyed property, cities. I mean, the the actual damage from not only just uh, violent crimes and homicides, but also just structural damage to cities and businesses that black people committed last year is astonishing. Absolutely astonishing how much crime was committed, how many cities and businesses were burned down in the namesake of BLM, of Black Lives Matter, the worst organization ever, which has really turned into a terrorist organization because whenever it doesn't get what it wants, it organizing uh, with an organization in an organized fashion goes in and riots and loots and black people get killed, white people get killed, every, a lot of people, different people get killed from this movement. But the thing is that it's it doesn't all end there. Things can get better. And what we're seeing here is that there's this new video, uh, the short clip between this dad and his daughter, making the best case against critical race theory that I've ever heard. Daddy teaches you you can be anything in this world that you want to be, right? Don't daddy teach you that? Yeah, and it doesn't matter if, if you're black or white or any color. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, yellow. yellow. Right? Black. And and how we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are. And if they're nice and smart. See? This is how this is how children think right here. Critical race theory wants to end that. Not with my children. It's not gonna happen. My baby's gonna know that no matter what she wants to be in life, all she has to do is work hard and she can become that. Work hard even though you don't know anyone, you can make friends. <laughs> Yeah, you can make friends, no matter what color they are. So we need to stop CRT, period, point blank. Children do not see skin color, man. They love everybody. If they're good people, they love them. We pray for people that are hurt. That right there is what MLK wanted. By all accounts and measures, MLK would be completely canceled by the left by now. They don't like that man at all based off of his own beliefs. They'd be calling him an Uncle Tom, you name it. But it's a simple, simple idea that judging people based off of the content of their character is significantly more important, is the only important thing, than when you look at skin color. Skin color is irrelevant. Martin Luther King wanted to get rid of the notion of skin color. He didn't care. His dream was that we wouldn't see this weird, these different colors as being important. Of course, we'll see some of these black, white, or Hispanic, or otherwise, but the point is, is that we're not going to treat that as important. We're not going to use that to judge a person. That what would be used is the content of their character and not the color of their skin. And that is exactly what this little girl's talking about. That's exactly what her father's talking about. That's why it's important. Fathers matter. Black fathers matter. It's teachers that are like that. It's so important. Parents matter. Teaching your kids matters. Absolutely. We need more dads teaching these kids and less CRT public schools teaching our kids. That's why we don't want it in the school system. It's not right. And you're forcing it onto these students when it has no business about that. The thing is that if you go to a kindergarten or a playground, you're going to see children playing with other children. They don't care. They're not looking at race, this or that or the other. They don't care. That prejudice is taught, and it's taught through CRT, through critical race theory. That's the method of which this is going into play. They think they're doing the right thing, but in reality, once again, what I said before, when you call attention to it, to a child or otherwise, what you're doing is you're telling them and informing them, hey, that guy's different than you. If you left a classroom of kids well enough alone, they're not going to think anything of it by people being a different race or otherwise. They're not going to care. It won't matter to them. But when you stick CRT in, as an adult, you're thinking, oh, this is great. This is teaching them about how black people are oppressed and blah, 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 blah. Well, what you're doing is you say, hey, that guy over there, he's he's different than you are. Oh, and you, because you're white, you're uh, automatically an oppressor on him. You you are automatically racist towards him by nature. And you're telling this to kids and, and you expect them not to be actually racist towards each other? Martin Luther King would never have st- stood for that. Anybody with common sense knows that. They hate Martin Luther King with a passion. They would have to. Everything that he believes in, they disagree with right now. So this was one of the dumb tweets 
as well on this post uh, underneath this video. So this guy says, such an unrealistic video of CRT. You can be nice, but everyone is not nice to you. Ask those who have experienced racist acts or people who are bullied. That's an extremely, extremely stupid argument. The thing is, is that what they're saying when they're saying you can be nice, but not everyone is nice to you. Ask those who experience racist acts or people who are bullied. That's why it's unrealistic about CRT. That's what they're saying there. But what they're missing out on of understanding is that CRT is specifically talking about the way in which you view yourself and the way that you should view others around you to be a certain set locked in roles of because they're this color, it's automatically this certain way or the other way. What this guy's saying in this video is, look, forget about all of that crap, right? <laughs> if you, if a person is nice to you and, and you're nice to them, you can be friends. You can be friends with basically anybody. Bad people are bad people. They're, you can judge them by their character. You don't have to look at their skin color. And what this guy is saying is that you can be nice, but everyone's not nice to you. Hey, dude, newsflash, that's a part of life. I don't know one person in this world. Find me the person, actually. Please, sir, that made this dumb tweet. Find me the person in the world that has had everyone be nice to them. Because you're not going to find them. It doesn't work that way. That doesn't give you an excuse to then implement some crazy, radical, stupid, racist training into classrooms all of a sudden and think that that's okay. That's not how that works for you, sir. And it never will. I don't care. Nobody cares about your experience with racist acts. Nobody cares about the fact that you were bullied. The point is, is that you can get and be anything you want, no matter what it is. You don't need to rely on them saying that you were automatically doomed to fail because of the color of your skin of all things. Something that you didn't choose, something that is entirely irrelevant. The fact is, man, is that you can look around your classroom. I'm sure we all know. We've lived long enough to know this. Certain people have certain opportunities a little bit easier than other people in life. But that does not stop you from being able to achieve it. Nothing does. Nothing does. The grass is always greener. It doesn't matter what level you're at. If you're Bill Gates, you're probably looking at over somebody else that's making more money than you are. It's always something else to obtain if you're concerned about trying to obtain it just for the sake of obtaining it. The point is, is that you don't need to worry about all of that kind of stuff. Achieve and work hard to achieve the goals that you have. Don't bother worrying about everybody else around you and what they're doing. Focus on your missions. Focus on your goals and you can achieve whatever it is. That's how simple it works. And yet you have a training in schools today, in many schools, that are telling your children, you can't achieve that. You need government help to get there. You need to be given special attention, special treatment to achieve those things. You can't achieve them on their own. And it's the biggest slap in the face to those that have actually worked hard to get somewhere in their life. And that's why CRT is racist and it's wrong and MLK would be rolling over in his grave if he heard anything about this at that time during that during the time that he was actually alive. So either way, with that being said, it's still a positive thing to see a dad and her daughter going through these things, talking about this on this video is extremely uplifting to me. I hope we see more of this. More people need to see that video. More people need to understand what's going on in our society today and how we can actually change the framework about the way that things are going on. Black fathers matter, and so do our children. We need to protect the children. We need to be looking out for our children at all costs because they are kind of the future. It really does matter that we actually pay attention to everything that's going on in our society, but at least we can end some of this on a somewhat of a high note. So I thank you for listening or watching to the show. Once again, please remember to subscribe to the channel on Rumble and also to join my Telegram channel as well at t.me slash William5849. But with that being said, I thank you for watching or listening and I will see you on the next one.